Hello, and welcome back to this Visionaire tutorial series, New Game Essentials. In this tutorial, we will be creating fonts. Since most adventure games are known for their dialogue and involving storylines, the displaying of text on the screen is a necessary feature of Visionaire. Fonts are a means of describing how to draw that text on the screen. Visionaire supports two different types of fonts, vector fonts and bitmap fonts. Bitmap fonts, as the name suggests, are fonts that are drawn pixel by pixel, just like a bitmap or image is. While vector fonts are a mathematical description of how to draw the characters. Each has its advantages, however in the end, Vector fonts are recommended because they are so much more flexible than bitmap fonts. To get a feel for the difference between the two types, let's create one of each. If you followed along in my Game Assets tutorial for creating bitmap fonts, you should have a font already created. Let's go to Visionaire. In the font section of the main toolbar, it's the one that's the big blue A. If you click on that, it will take us to the font section where we can create our font. Let's start by creating a bitmap font. Click the plus sign, and we'll call this speech. Now, let's go to the properties tab. Now, you'll notice that it's divided into two areas, true type font and own font. Now, you might think that that's, this is the true type section and this is the bitmap section only, but actually some controls are shared back and forth between the two. So if we are going to create a bitmap font, we'll leave the true type font checkmark unchecked and we'll set our font just by going to the font image and choosing the browse button. And under my GUI uh, graphics fonts uh, folder, I have a font already created. And I'll just open that up. And if we go back to the fonts tab, we'll actually get a preview of that font. Now to double check that this font is going to be read properly by Visionaire, I'm going to click the display letter areas button, which will put a dashed square around each of the characters within the text. If you notice a character seemingly having two boxes around it, that means that Visionaire is reading that single character as two. So for instance, you might be wary of characters such as the double quote, that it doesn't have two boxes around it rather than just one as it does right here. Now the next step for creating a bitmap font, I'll take that preview off, uh, is to line up the order of the characters in the image with the orders of the characters in the alphabet. Now, since this was based on a template that is on Visionaire's website, Visionaire's website has the alphabet on that template page. So let's just go to that template page and we'll copy and paste this character set out. If I go back to Visionaire, highlight all that and I'll paste it. Now one word of caution is check to make sure there's no white space before or in between, for instance, between this euro and this one, where the character set wrapped on the page, it pasted in a white space, and I have to take that out so that this matches perfectly with this alphabet. If you notice that when you go to view your uh, text on the screen and the text you've typed in, and what it's displaying are out of alignment. 
uh, it's printing different characters than it's supposed to, it's most likely the fault of the fact that the alphabet here doesn't line up with what is in the image. Now, we need to tie this font to the character. So let me go to our cook character, and then under properties, there is a font option. So if we drop down font, we can choose speech, which is the font we just finished creating. Now, I have a little demonstration set up already so that we can uh, view the this character set in action. If I go and do a save and run, we can see our character here, and I have some hot spots already created within the scene just as a test so that we can see this. So I'm going to click on this sign, and he says, oh, it's a sign. And I have some treats in the background here. Yum, I've seen jewelry shops with less frosting. And this one's a little bit random, so it comes up with a different phrase. It randomizes different things. I notice though that the text is a little close together, so let's go back and fix that. I'm going to shut down the demonstration here, go back to the fonts, choose speech, and then under properties, letter spacing here, it's moving the, the characters back four spaces each so that they're closer together, but they don't need to be that close. In fact, they're, they're rammed up a little too much together. So I'm going to increase that value to minus two from minus four and see if that looks a little bit better. So let's run that, save and run, and check out again. Ah, yeah, that's better. That's a little bit better. Um, I think, yes, that's a little more readable, I think. It's not all squashed together. So with bitmap fonts, you have to tweak these uh, values. Same way with true type fonts, when we get into that next, uh, you have to tweak some of these values. So the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to create a true type font. And it's the same process. We click create new entry and let's give this a name. I'm just going to call it speech two give it lowercase characters. And this time, under the properties, I'm going to choose true type font. Now, over here, some of these values have now grayed out. That's because they are bitmap only uh, values. And what we want to do is we'll only need these two values here, the, the letter spacing and the line spacing, to adjust the, the kerning or the uh, values uh, of the spacing between the letters and between the lines for the true type font. Everything else is, is uh, dealt with within the font definition. Now, I already have a true type font picked out. However, I'll show you where I got my font from. Under uh, Safari, I'm going to go to dafont.com. And here in this place, they offer uh, many, many types of fonts. Some are just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but for to use them in a game, you have to make sure you're using fonts that are only 100% free or that are in the public domain. Uh, type licenses. And the way you can determine that is go under any one of these categories. Uh, for instance, cartoon. If you go under there and then under more options, there is only as, and they've got public domain and 100% free. And those are the two that we want. So if we have those check marked, then if we do a preview of the text that we want, I'm just going to put in O, oh, it's a sign because that's one of our statements. I want to see how it looks in these different fonts. So I'm going to submit that, and then it'll show me the different fonts with that text. 
Now, we'll notice that some of these fonts do not have all of the characters. For instance, this one, it has boxes there where the exclamation point and the apostrophe should be. So fonts like that aren't very good uh, for, for using in a game. In some cases, you don't want a font like that anyway. You want more of a solid font. In fact, this is the font that I'm currently using, uh, or I'm going to use in in the true type font is a uh, big bottom cartoon and that looks good it's a solid nice font so I'm going to use that one I've already downloaded it into my assets folder so let's go back to Visionaire and we'll just choose that big bottom typeface normal and that's a true type font file Visionaire also accepts open type uh, fonts and these are vector fonts. Now, uh, I'm going to leave the values that are here as is, everything by default. And then let's go back to our character and switch the speech font for our cook to speech two. So that is using the true type font. Back under fonts, speech to. Now with speech to we can actually get a preview of our font if we click there and this actually says the quick uh, <laughs> the quick brown fox or something like that. <laughs> it's one of those standard quotes but right now it's all kind of jammed together so let's go under properties and see if we can get this uh, straightened out a little bit. I'd like to have the size a little larger, so let's increase the size from 12. I'm going to put it up to 22. If you left click on one of these numbers, it will increase it by one. If you right click, it will decrease it. So let's increase that to 22, and I'll leave the rest of the values the same. But I think we need to adjust the letter spacing. We don't want it decreased by four. Let's put it way up because it's really jammed together. Let's put it up to about two. And let's go back to the font. There we go. That's better. That's more like what we want. All right. Now, let's go back to File, choose Save and Run, and see what this looks like. That's better. OK. Yeah, that's good. Now we can also change the color of a true type font, unlike a bitmap font where you'd have to go back to the bitmap editor, such as Photoshop, change the color there, and then come back in and reload uh, the font file into a new into a new font if you wanted to preserve the old color, or just uh, replace it with the new image. Here, all we have to do is actually set the color. There is RGB, or you can do a hue saturation values. But what you do is you can choose the values by clicking on left clicking on the value, red, green, or blue, and then use the slider to slider along. Now the color that you're looking at is the color that when you release would be the color that you've mixed. It's not if this was a red, this is red, this is green, this is blue. If this was red, this should all be filled with red if you're mixing in red. But this actually displays the color you'll get in the end, not the color you're mixing in. So we'll leave that up. If we want yellow, we should be able to go to the blue and take blue completely out because red and green together uh, make yellow in the case of computer colors. Okay, so we'll do that so that now that matches our original here that it's it's got uh, a black outline and yellow text the same way and we should be able to just go straight into our preview we can look at it that looks much better that's going to stand out in our in our text in our scene 
we'll say run, and there we go. All done. So I hope that uh, shows the difference between bitmap fonts and true type fonts and how uh, easy it is to create them, to tie them to a character, and both of them will often need to adjust the letter spacing, even the line spacing may need to be adjusted between them. However, to get the overall appearance of the font, it is easier to do that with the true type font than it is with a bitmap font because you have so many options here for borders, to adjust the border color, the border size, whether to put on a shadow or not, it's offset, and all these values are just adjusted and you can instantaneously go back in and view them. Whereas a bitmap font, you have to go back out to the editor and adjust it there, resave it, bring it back in, and there's a lot of editing involved. Whereas true type fonts, it's easy enough to scale them up, down, uh, change the type, and so on. It's just all around much easier to use. And there's no quibbling about the alphabet. You don't have to change the alphabet, set the alphabet for a true type font. All right, so I hope that was informative. That's the end of this tutorial. Hope to see you in the next.